Hi, excursionists. Thank you so much for coming to our very first audio drama. This is a four-parter. Be sure to tune in every Thursday during the month of November so that you don't miss any episodes. I'd like to take this moment to introduce you to our talented voice cast. Robin Regalado, voicing Madeline Robbins. Gary Scales, voicing Elliot Roseman. Riley Manis, voicing Thomas. Additional voices are provided by Glenn Craig. And Cassandra is voiced by me, Nari Kwok. Check the description below for contact information. It's time to get going. Everybody stay together. The path is just ahead. Welcome to Into the Night. I'm Nari, your guide on today's excursion down a twisted path. Be careful not to get lost. Be it dark or light, it's easy to lose your way. Are you ready? Then let's begin. Distant Relatives, Part 2 Making it through the next two days of work felt like forever. On the weekend, Cassandra obsessed over what to pack. Practically, her entire closet full of clothes was spread across her bedroom before she finally settled on the eight outfits she packed for a four-day trip. Finally, Monday afternoon arrived. The flight into LaGuardia was short, and a limousine service met her as she exited the secure gate area. Hello, Miss Robbins. Mr. Roseman is eager to see you. The clean-cut young man sent to pick her up at the airport took her luggage from her. Follow me. If you're hungry or thirsty, the limousine is equipped with food and beverages. The hotel where you will be staying has excellent restaurants as well. I'm going to meet the president of the company today? Yes, you will meet him, but that won't happen until tomorrow. Does he meet all of the people who do ads for him? No, only the special ones. I'm parked over there. He nodded his head toward a shiny black limo across the street. The only time I've been to New York was when Mom took my cousins and me here to see a Broadway play when I was 16. The ride took her through bustling streets and high-rise buildings. When the limo driver stopped in front of the luxury hotel, even the facade took her breath away. The driver carried her bags and made certain she checked in before he left. I'll be here at 8 tomorrow morning to take you to our headquarters. Have a lovely evening. A lovely evening. How could she not have one? Cassandra gawked at the opulence around her. The hotel attendant escorted her to her room and dropped her bags off at the threshold. The room was exquisite. Real art, not cheap prints, hung on the wall. A balcony looked out over the sparkling skyline as darkness fell. Cassandra decided she liked how the wealthy lived. The refrigerator held her favorite snacks, and the bar came fully equipped. She made herself an amaretto sour, tossed in extra cherries, and sat on the balcony while she took in the view. Room service brought her dinner. Lost in the moment, time escaped her. When she checked her phone, she was surprised to see it was past midnight. She hated to miss a single second of this experience, but her eyes struggled to stay open. She slid under the silk sheets and lolled in the comfort of the king-sized bed. The next thing she knew, her alarm rang, and she awoke to early morning rays of sunshine streaming into the room from the balcony. She couldn't remember having a sounder slumber, and exhilaration over the upcoming events of today swept over her as she threw back the comforter. By this evening, she would star in an ad shown nationwide on nearly every channel. This was a big deal. Lost in reverie, the ringing of her phone jarred her back to reality. It was her mother. A pang of guilt shot through her. Suddenly, she felt as though she was committing a mortal sin by searching for her biological family. Like a cheating spouse who had just been caught, she froze, uncertain of what to say, worried that her infidelity would be evident in her voice. Fear and pain washed over her, and she almost didn't answer in time. Uh, hi, Mama. Good morning, Cassie. I hope I'm not calling too close to when you have to be at work. Cassandra never mentioned her trip to Madeline. This had been her private secret. At the same time, she didn't want to lie to her mother, So she decided to split the difference. Oh no, you're okay. I've spent my whole life trying to make sure Mama is okay. That she never knew the turmoil I've gone through wondering who I am. I'm not going to pick today to upset her. Oh, good. I know you need to be in the office soon. Actually, I've taken a few days off. Her free hand played with her hair. 
a habit she'd had ever since childhood whenever she was nervous. Oh. She heard the hurt tone in her mother's voice. I didn't know. Are you doing something special? I'm sorry I didn't tell you. It's nothing important. Marcia told me this would be a good time to use a few vacation days since we're between projects. I decided to come to New York City and just see the sights for a few days. Her mother paused. New York? Why New York? You usually don't do anything unless there's a reason. Is there a man? Cassandra blushed. Ever since high school, her mother had been too interested in her love life. No, Mom, I'm here alone. I just decided to do something spontaneous, that's all. It's just for a few days. I couldn't take enough time off to fly home. I'll do that in September like we'd already planned. She knew Madeline Robbins well enough to know her mother felt slighted. Oh, good. Well, be safe, will you? I've heard on the news about the crime rate spiking there. Mom, I'm fine. I'm in a safe place. But I really need to get ready. For what? Cassandra's mind reeled. She'd boxed herself into a corner. She had to think of something quick. Oh, there's a tour at a museum I want to do this morning. The hotel clerk told me it's best to do the early one, or I might get caught in traffic and rack up extra charges in my taxi. Madeline seemed satisfied with that explanation. Give me a call later on, Cassie. And tell me all about your adventures. I will, Mama. Love you. She hung up and sat on the bed as she regained her composure. While she'd lived her whole life as a lie, she hated the feeling that she'd only delayed Madeline's heartbreak. Time was ticking, however, and she had to focus on the day ahead. She ordered room service, showered, and put on her favorite dress with just enough time to meet the driver in the lobby below. Thank you for joining me for Into the Night, an anthology series written by Caroline Giamanco, narrated and produced by Nari Kwok, with music created by Alex Sexton. You can find our links in the description below. Into the Night is available on your favorite podcast directory, so be sure to subscribe and follow so you never miss an episode. Make sure you leave us a five-star review, as it really does help new excursionists to find their way here. Share with any of your friends who you think would like to join us. Also, stop by and say hi sometime. We're on Twitter at Into the Night Pod or by email at itnanthology at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. And remember, whether in the shadows or in the daylight, all twisted paths take you into the night. Thank you.